Hello folks. Welcome to another episode of the Personal Development and Growth Series. And today uh, we tackle planning your successful habit transition. What we want to do is explore how to change those pesky habits that we have developed over the past uh, number of years. <laughs> number of years. Now I'm your host, uh, Richard Fontenay. In today's episode, uh, we're going to explore how we can transition from a habit we don't like to a more positive one. And as we'll discover, the journey of uh, habit changing is not always easy, but uh, it can be done. And it can be done with uh, patience and some determination. Now, habit changing is a personal process that can be accomplished no matter where we are in life whether we are self-employed, uh, whether we employ others, or fill a position in the workplace. It doesn't matter where we're at, it can be done. You know, our recent article in the uh, Fontenay magazine explores how habits work. And, and it's an article I suggest you read as a, as a background uh, to this podcast because it clarifies how to break bad habits from uh, to new empowering ones. Uh, I, I provided a, a link in the description below. Now here's the problem, folks. Um, transitioning to a new habit is not easy. And all throughout your life uh, and my life, uh, we face challenges and the best way to overcome a challenge is to develop a plan now let's get into that kind of discussion let's first talk about uh, the phases of uh, habit formation now you may not be surprised that there are three main phases to habit formation they are the honeymoon phase the critical phase and uh, the, uh, the second nature phase. Now, these phases are, are not linear, moving naturally from one phase to another. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, sometimes uh, you can find yourself um, going in and out of different phases. However, uh, you need to be aware of what they mean so that uh, you can monitor your progress uh, uh, effectively. Let's look at the honeymoon phase. As the name suggests, um, this is the new, exciting and fun phase of habit formation. It's, it's like when you first uh, meet somebody and fall in love. You have more zest of life and, and you're motivated to make the necessary changes to keep that phase going. Now, the problem with the honeymoon phase is that it only lasts for a certain period of time. Um, at some point, reality begins to kick in and you automatically uh, enter the next phase. And, and really, that's a shame. Um, and it, it's, it's like any kind of new relationships, but it happens. Uh, so, you, so we need to take this into consideration. Now, after the honeymoon phase comes the critical phase. Uh, this is a vulnerable time as uh, we begin to start to have doubts about everything. Just like uh, in that relationship that uh, we talked about earlier. For instance, you might start to wonder whether your new exercise habit is really worth the trouble of uh, uh, that uh, you're going through. And during this phase, uh, your motivation to keep going is uh, waning. It becomes much weaser, uh, weaker. Now, the good news is, is that we can survive this critical key, uh, stage if we approach it right. Now, the first step is to recognize that there is a problem. Now, if your motivation is fading, uh, we need to remind uh, yourself and myself that forming a new habit is tough. 
And then we need to decide whether we will carry on or not. Uh, we want to stick to our new routine, so it's, it's time to ask uh, the critical question. How will I feel if I fail with my new routine? So here's what I suggest. Think about the great feelings you have already experienced with your new routine and make these feelings uh, well within you. Make them strong uh, within, within you. Uh, the final step is getting through the critical phase and that is to visualize your life in the longer term after and the routine becomes a habit. Now, if your new habit is exercise, see yourself fitter and looking good. How will you look in one year's time? Uh, what about five years time? Now, if you stop your routine now, uh, will you look as good? Mm, I would suggest not. Uh, so, now let's take a look at the the final phase, the second nature phase. You can probably guess what this phase is all about. Uh, when you get there, your new routine will feel second nature to you. The routines are getting closer to becoming basically automatic. Uh, but watch that phrase, automatic habit, because uh, it gives the impression as we identified in our article uh, that I mentioned earlier, that automatic means that we can't change them, but we can. Now, remember this kind of a thing as well. Um, there are a couple of things that uh, can cause you to return to the critical phase. Uh, so you need to be careful. For example, something may change in your life that disrupts your routine. And here's a real life example. Um, I uh, was in the habit of the past year of doing a YouTube short every day. Um, that was a habit of mine. I was able to do that regularly. But something happened. Uh, unfortunately, my wife had an accident uh, and uh, broke her back. Uh, that really disrupted my routine. And so I had to make a number of adjustments in order to, uh, to get back on track. You may also uh, feel, experience uh, feelings of, um, of discouragement like you did in that critical phase. Now, if either of these things happens, always focus on the long-term aim, which will provide you with the inspiration and the motivation to see the habit through. So, going back to my example, you know, I had a, 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 um, a long-term goal of uh, within my uh, business, of doing YouTubes every day. Um, that was disrupted. But I kept the long-term goal in mind. And that provided me with the motivation to get back at what I uh, had become, what had become a habit of mine. Now, let's get to your habit transition plan. Uh, you know, we need, a, we need a good plan to keep going with our uh, routine. And uh, we recommend the following four steps to create the best habit transition plan. Um, number one, create a list of your small steps and long-term goals. And number two, eliminate uh, unwanted results. And number three, Link your desired behaviors uh, with your everyday experiences. And number four, 
set a routine in the morning. Now let's look at each of these uh, in turn. The first is uh, creating a list of your small steps and long-term goals. Now it's very important that you use the power of visualization here to visualize your long-term goals as your reality. So really what you want to do is take a hard look at where is it that you want to be with any type of goal and uh, then step back and say, okay, what are the steps to get there? Because this will allow you to stick to your habit transitions because you can see what your life will be at the end. Now, it's not always, it's not always easy to visualize your long-term goals. So it's important to identify the smaller steps to help you progress. And that uh, will allow you to um, give you the, uh, the measurements of going towards that long-term goal. So if your long-term goal is to be physically fit and uh, to be healthy, a smaller step uh, is to perform a simple daily exercise routine. Uh, the smaller steps are important because they all dovetail into that longer term goal. So writing a list of these steps can ensure that this happens. This is an essential if you are attempting to break several bad habits and form new ones at the same time. Um, sorry for the, uh, the, the phone if, if, if that's uh, bothering you. Um, so uh, for the fitness goal as an example, some smaller steps could be simple exercises each day, uh, following a healthier diet, uh, going to the gym three times a week, and so on. Now all of these small steps make uh, visualization easier. Secondly, uh, eliminated uh, unwanted results. Now, this is all about uh, removing temptations from your path. Uh, filling your kitchen with, uh, or your office office desk with, uh, with unhealthy un un uh, candies <laughs> or snacks is it, not a really a great idea if you, if you want to become uh, fit. And of course, uh, you can never uh, completely eliminate everything. Maybe uh, someone will come uh, and pop in with uh, something quite delicious, and and you want to you want to eat that. Well, uh, going off the array rails occasionally is okay. Uh, so when it comes to habit forming, going off the rails occasionally. That's a big word, occasionally. It's not, it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, because you can get back on the rails, so to speak. Make a list of the things that uh, could cause you to fail with your routine. So visualize the, uh, the, the potential pitfalls in your journey and remove any kind of distractions that are likely to, to uh, disrupt you. Um, Sometimes something can happen that could distract you. Now, if you always go for a run at a certain time each day, as an example, and somebody approaches you to do something else at that time of the day, uh, then, uh, then you need to see this as a potential disruptor. And you need to uh, be strong here and politely tell that person that you can't do it right now because you have another priority that you're wanting to do. And uh, number three, uh, link the uh, desired behaviors with what you already do. Now, this is a simple process of associating desired behaviors with things that you already do in your life. Um, you can I'd always use this as a way of avoiding uh, possible distractions. So for example, if you always run at 7 p.m. each evening and know that your friend has a habit of uh, turning up around that time, just start out a few minutes earlier 
to, to avoid uh, uh, this problem. Uh, likewise, if you have a habit of going to the, to the office every day and you know that, in one, that tomorrow morning is going to be a, a lot of traffic, uh, heavy traffic or the road is under construction, uh, then uh, you need to uh, start out earlier in order to get to work on time. Let's say that uh, you want to achieve two different goals at once. One is to be fit and, um, and the other is to learn a new skill. Well, you could find some audio recordings just like this one that will help you develop your new skill and then listen to them while you're exercising. And number four, make your uh, morning routine an essential part of what it is that you do. Now, having a good morning routine will set the tone for your day. Now, if you start um, your day correctly, uh, you'll have more energy to be more efficient and productive throughout that day. Uh, why do I know this? Well, studies have shown that uh, we only have so much willpower. And that willpower dissipates slowly as, as the day progresses. Now, each decision that we make, however small or big, contributes to this dissipation. So having a great morning routine really helps us minimize the number of decisions that you need to make during the rest of the day. So uh, here's another thing that you could do. If you know what your cycle is, for instance, if you are more alert in the morning, then move what is the hard stuff that you need to do and put those in the morning so that uh, you have uh, a, a greater ability to achieve them because you know that uh, your uh, willpower will dissipate as we go out through the day. Now, another great reason uh, for a good morning routine is that it gives us greater control over our lives. Uh, knowing uh, what will, uh, knowing what we will be doing each day, uh, can help uh, minimize the anxiety that we that we may have. So. Add a good morning routine to your plan. First, do things that will make you feel positive and energized. Create a task list for the things that you need to achieve for the day. And you can do this really the night before, which also allows you to sleep better. Um, this way, you will not feel anxious at the start of your day and you will uh, make uh, you will feel better and more positive about the kinds of things that will happen during the day. So folks, as we conclude this episode, I encourage you to embark uh, on your journey of transitioning habits. Consider the phases you go through, the honeymoon, the critical and uh, the second nature phases and develop a transition plan that incorporates creating a list of small steps and long-term goals, eliminating unwanted uh, results. Number three, associating desired behaviors with things that you already do. And number four, uh, developing a morning routine. And with patience, dedication, and resilience, resilience uh, you can break free from uh, your old habits and garner new positive ones. Now, thank you for uh, tuning in to this episode in our series on personal development and uh, growth. And don't forget to subscribe and share this uh, podcast with anyone whom you think might benefit from this message. And I really appreciate you doing that. Oh, and be sure to check out the resources below. Until next Wednesday, remember that you have uh, the power to shed old habits and acquire new positive ones. And as always, 
Continue becoming the best version of yourself. Bye for now. See you next week.